in this module, we would be studying Sharia treatment of credit and credit card. Not only in this module, actually this would be our focus in the next 10 or 11 modules. It is an, an important topic, hence we would be spending some considerable time on understanding the treatment of credit slash debt slash loan in Islam and its implications for the offering of Islamic credit cards. What is credit? Let's go back to the basic and try to understand the nature of credit. On a lighter note, Urdu mein hum kehte hain isko bada credit jata hai. Main us credit ki baat nahi kar raha. I'm talking about the credit which we use in financial markets. In its simplest form, credit is a debt, loan or receivable. So this is basically when uh, I buy something on a deferred payment basis, then this could be called a credit sale. And we have studied that credit sale is permissible in Islamic law. Actually, Mu'ajjal, that is an example of credit sale, and this is acceptable in an Islamic banking and finance framework. There are quite a number of products which are based on this principle. While trade can take place, trade of commodities, trade of goods and services, it can take place on the basis of credit sale. Money can only be given on credit or i.e. can be lent but without charging extra which is deemed as prohibited interest. So this is a very clear difference of treatment of credit sale and money on credit. And we would look into these differences with the help of some diagrams. Let's see, there is a party A and there is a party B. And they want to exchange a commodity X for a price P. We have time dimension here. This is time dimension and this is time dimension. If party B gives a commodity X to party A at T naught, meaning spot now, and party A gives the price at the same time to party B, that would be considered as a spot sale. And a lot of sales actually are spot sales. Whenever I go to a shop, to a store, to a selling place, I actually do these spot sales. This is okay. Now, if party, party A gives the commodity X to party B at T naught and party B actually pays the price at a future date T1, we call it a credit sale. And as I mentioned previously, that would be ba Mwajjal. All right. Then we have another possibility whereby party A actually delivers the commodity later while receiving the price from party B now. So party B is uh, paying the price now to party A and party B pays the uh, delivers the commodity at T1. This is 
a depiction of Basalam which we have already studied. This is the case of Ba Istisna. The price is paid by party, uh, party B, i.e., the buyer in installments at T0, T1, T2. So, party B is paying the price now, after some time, after some time with the progression of the project and the commodity is delivered by the seller on a future date when it has been made on order. So, that is the case of Bay Istisna. When it comes to money, if money is exchanged dollars for dollars, if they are exchanged on spot, so party A is giving dollars now and party B is giving the dollars at the same time, that would be the spot exchange of dollars. Thus dollars abhi diye or thus dollars abhi le liye. You might be thinking that I am crazy. What kind of an exchange is this one? Jis mein das rupay abhi de ke das rupay wapas le le. Actually, this happens many a times uh, without we realizing that this is what we are doing. Do you have any example in mind? Many a times people exchange nay note with Purane note, semi price pay, in some cases with different quantities and we will come to that one. Now, if this party is uh, delivering dollars now and party B is uh, paying the same amount of dollars in future, that is called as loan. Now, the situation changes when we have two different currencies. If party A gives dollars to party B now and party B actually gives rupees to party A at the same time, that is called spot currency exchange. What happens? When party A gives uh, dollars now, in exchange for party B delivering rupees later on, this is prohibited in Islam. The previous examples, there is uh, acceptance or there is provision for acceptance in an Islamic legal framework. But if I receive ten dollars today, in exchange for an amount in rupees after one week, after one month, that would not be considered acceptable in an Islamic economic or Islamic financial or Islamic legal framework. Now, this remains prohibited even when I receive dollars now in lump sum and I am required to pay rupees in easy installments over certain time period. That is not acceptable either. And this information, general information is crucial to our understanding of the treatment of credit and credit cards in Islamic banking and finance. And this is something we would be covering in the next few modules.